Uh, okay, I, I want to talk about Costco. Now, on the one hand, we have Walmart executives caught in an email saying, in case you haven't seen a sales report these days, February month to date sales are a total disaster. Costco wholesale's net income for the second quarter climbed 39% as it pulled in more money from membership fees, sales improved, and it recorded a large tax benefit. The CEO, Craig Jelinek, openly supports raising the minimum wage, not to the $9 President Obama has, has proposed, but to $11.50 an hour. Now, David Pakman shared a lot of really great points and statistics there, and I wanted to share a few more with you. A Sam's Club employee starts off at about $10 a week and makes $12.50 after four and a half years. A new Costco employee starts off at $11 an hour and makes $19.50 an hour after four and a half years, so there's a huge contrast there. Well, I, I have to go back to the, uh, the noted socialist Henry Ford who, uh, you know, he knew enough back then that you had to pay your employees enough that you could go ahead and buy the products. And somehow, uh, you know, I, I think of Henry Ford was some sort of modern political figure. He'd be disparaged by a lot of people in talk radio and on the right as some sort of crazed socialist, you know, for, for that kind of talk. The while I, I appreciate the sentiment behind that, because the world economy has changed so much, if you pay your employees enough to afford the product you're selling, who's to say they're not going to use that money to buy a competitor's product? Uh, back in 2012, last year, Walmart decided that they're no longer going to provide any type of health care coverage to its part-time employees. So if you're working 24 hours uh, a, a week, you're not going to get any health care. So as a result, we are seeing the government subsidize Walmart by basically giving them uh, public health care. So this is a really big problem because not only are they not paying their employees a living wage, but at the same time, us, the taxpayers, have to pay for the health care of these employees. Um, so I, I think that that's a really big problem. But again, it, as I said, it's very difficult to play devil's advocate here. Well, you have to enjoy the irony of people who would uh, claim in defense of the free market that what Walmart is doing is the right thing to do, when in fact it's not the free market that's supporting them at all. And they would characterize Walmart's own employees in that situation as takers, mm -hmm. which uh, the irony is kind of gross. What's really running the world now are corporations. They're larger and more powerful than governments. So Walmart, as far as I understand, most of the success of Walmart is due to the fact that they get almost all their products from China. The question that I want to end this segment on is, do corporations have a moral obligation to take care of its employees? There's always this debate between libertarians and uh, you know liberals when it comes to morality within corporations. Well, now that they're treated as citizens, I mean, now that a corporation is essentially has the same rights as a citizen, I think the question of morality comes up. The problem with the morality question is that I don't think we all have the same moral compass. I think ultimately what I deem fair is not going to be deemed fair by someone else. So to say that like you have a moral incentive, the CEO of Walmart, clearly this guy, this guy sells guns online. They went on sale the day after the Noon Massacre. I mean, it's like, I don't really want to know what his morals are. <laughs> yeah, we can't really uh, you know, try to drive it on a, a, a moral argument. We can simply try to look at what effectively works and what doesn't. And it seems fairly obvious that if we just decide to abandon large swaths of our fellow citizens, uh, that we will wind up with cities being abandoned. And we're, we're going to get the phenomenon that we're currently seeing. Hopefully, the younger generation of people who are in business school right now and are being influenced by this thinking of, of uh, trying to create massive businesses that make their money not by trying to upscale and maximize the amount of gouging they can do, but by figuring out how to bring costs down effectively to reach a wider market of people in need, then I think uh, that might be one solution uh, that makes this whole discussion maybe in 20 years unnecessary.